Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And today, we are checking out The So High, So Low by Analog Music Company. You may remember Analog Music Company from my previous video I did about the evil pumpkin fuzz, which is absurd and delightful. Check that video out if you want to know more about this crazy thing. Link. Uh, in the description. So High So Low is a high pass, low pass filter, preamp and saturation unit. This is music to my ears. I love preamps, filters, saturation. All of these things are really good, particularly on electric violin, but as you'll see in a lot of different applications. Now that it's in my hands, I can confirm it's awesome. I really like it. Um, disclaimer, I paid full price for this, so the opinions expressed in this video are my own, but Constantine did send this to me early so that I could make a video in advance of the release. So there's the bias. Now on to the good stuff. So High So Low is inspired by a couple different synth designs. The preamp and saturation section is inspired by Moog synthesizers, so it has that fat, chewy goodness, and the filter section which I think is the piece de resistance of this pedal, is inspired by the Korg MS-20. The Korg MS-20 is one of the iconic synths of all time. It was released in 1978, and it was kind of a big deal for semi-modular synthesizers because it was very accessible and relatively inexpensive. You've definitely heard the Korg MS-20 before, including on stuff like Daft Punk, Air, the album Moon Safari, one of my favorites growing up. Lots and lots of electronic records use the MS-20. The thing that is so recognizable about it is that dirty, nasty filter. We're gonna take a look at 10 ways you can use this pedal, and you may be surprised at how versatile it is. Let's check it out. Thing number one, use it as a preamp. Well, it says right on the thing, you can use this as a preamp, but for what? Well, how about a microphone? This is a dynamic mic, it's a Shure SM58. It's just not that loud. If you wanna plug a mic into a guitar amp or anything that is expecting an instrument level signal, it's usually too quiet. I have here this adapter that will let the microphone cable go into the pedal, and we're gonna see how much of a difference this thing makes. Let's start with this at what I'm gonna to consider to be about unity gain. all the way up here we go and then i'm going to slowly bring the level of the preamp saturation knob up check check two two hey hey wow now all of a sudden this vocal mic is really popping so i don't even need that much if i bring it back to here i think that'll do once again here's with no support from the pedal with the pedal on you can hear me and it sounds pretty good that's nice if I want to have a nice chewier sound and maybe I'll bring the level back. Now this is the sound of a voice going through a 58. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's pretty good, but what about running an instrument through it? There are plenty of reviewers who are going to run it through an electric guitar. I could do that, but I'll save your time. I'm gonna run my electric violin through it instead, because this is pretty sweet. This is my violin. This is my Volta Violinatron Rob Flax signature model, the Flaxotron. Here's the dry signal of the violin with nothing else going on, just the dry direct signal. Now let's turn on the pedal. That's approximately unity. Look at that, there's more gain on tap. Again, before we've even used the preamp saturation, the master volume itself works as a boost. But listen to how the tone changes as I bring up that saturation. So 
So even at this setting, it's giving it a little bit of saturation and color, a little bit of harmonic distortion and content that wasn't there previously. It's kind of like a low gain overdrive. Let's crank the saturation. All of a sudden, this is an overdrive. Pretty sweet, but let's run it into a more traditional signal chain. So even with just a little bit of preamp saturation, it's got some real character, but if you crank it, it gives you a nice overdrive that I think plays really nicely with the character of an electric violin. Time to talk about filters. Mini science moment. What is a filter? A filter removes frequencies from your audio spectrum. If you have a high pass filter, it means you are getting rid of low frequencies. You are allowing only the high frequencies to pass through. A low pass filter does the opposite. It only allows low frequencies to pass through, which means depending on where you set these two knobs for the high pass and low pass filters, you can remove some unwanted stuff. Let's say, for example, I had a really aggressive sound that I wanted to remove some of the highs. What's a good way to demonstrate that? Ah, <laughs> how about with the evil pumpkin? Until there's nothing left. So that's the cutoff control. Now let's explore the resonance. Resonance basically gives a little bump, a little boost to whatever the frequency is right at the cutoff point. At low resonance settings, this just kind of does a little funky EQ thing, a little bit of boost at the place where you're trying to get rid of everything above it. Very useful. Check it out. Here's me a small amount of resonance. Can you hear how it just adds a little bit of life to that sweep? Wow. Uh-oh, getting 
getting close. At extreme resonance settings, it goes beyond a little boost into self-oscillating. It will actually make its own note, so it'll kind of squeal. Check it out. That frequency is below the cutoff of any note that this instrument could produce. So it's just doing a drone. It's just making a bass note. It makes its own note. That's another thing it does. Drones. I turned the volume down on this a bit because it gets pretty loud. like an 808 right now. And both together? That's kinda nice, la 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 la. Such a gentle explosion. Awesome. Here's a bonus setting for you. This is what I call the secret tremolo setting. And it only happens when you have the filters all the way open and the resonance all the way up. Check it out. So what's going on here? Well, the filter is self-oscillating. Specifically, it's the high-pass filter. 
It's going into self-oscillation, it's producing its own new wave, but that wave is going so slow because the frequency of it is determined by the cutoff and it's set really low. So the lowest frequency it's set to, that is below the audible range of human hearing. We can't hear that as an oscillator making sound. It is a low frequency oscillator, an LFO, if you will. And that is just turning up the volume up and down. It's getting in the way. It's interfering with the audio signal coming from the violin and that produces tremolo. As I turn the cutoff knob up, it gets faster and faster until you can hear it as a note, kind of like a ring mob. You get the idea. Secret tremolo. Use your pedal as a custom wah-wah. You might have noticed earlier when I was sweeping the cutoff frequency that it sounded a little like a familiar effect, a wah-wah. Well, that's because a wah pedal is just a resonant bandpass filter. There's a cutoff frequency, and as you push your foot up and down, you're controlling the cutoff frequency. You can do that with the so high, so low using the expression inputs for the low pass or the high pass. I have here on my little really wobbly demo stool thing, uh, a Dunlop Volume X Mini. This is a mini expression pedal or volume pedal. I've got the TRS cable. That's a TRS means there's tip ring sheath plugged into the middle port there. And that means that as I move this up and down, it's doing the same job as if I were turning the knob with my hand, which means my hands are free to rock out. Let's try it. I do the same thing into the high pass, it'll sweep that instead. Different sound. I don't find that to be quite as useful, but what if you could do both? I have here a splitter cable that takes TRS and turns it into tip and ring. I'm gonna plug that into the high pass expression input, the TRS side, and I'm gonna take these tip and ring, I'll take the ring to return, that's my remembering for the R's and alliteration, and I'm gonna use the volume part of the volume next me. <laughs> and then plug the tip into the input. You can do this with any volume pedal, by the way. You can turn any volume pedal into an expression pedal this way. Um, it's not practical most of the time. In this case, I have three little danglies coming off of here, so a bit of a hack job, but technically works. I think that's the better traditional wah sound. As you raise the cutoff of the low pass, you also raise the high pass, so it's sort of sweeping the band along all at once. Let's hear how it sounds if I'm playing wah style. <laughs> some resonance for the high pass. Now we get that dirty MS-20 vibe. Now we get a little bit of filth as I sweep. Okay, for these last three things, I'm gonna switch gears and use a synthesizer, specifically 
the Soma Labs Pulsar 23, the Organismic Drum Synth. I've got a video on my channel from when I first got that, if you wanna know a little bit more about it. Dish. Weird Alien Bongos, AKA Filter Pings. If you have a filter that's resonant enough to self-oscillate, but set it just a little bit back from all the way at the edge, a small bit of excitement will make a boom, a little ping noise. I have here my Pulsar 23, and I'm going to run audio from the Pulsar into the pedal, and then take the output of the pedal and put it back into the Pulsar. That's this purple one is what's going out into the pedal. That's on pin number five here. This is going back in on pin number six. When I connect it, you will hear what the pedal is currently hearing. Little clicks right now. Those are coming from the clock dividers. I have this set up so that it's not only doing one rhythm, but kind of a nice mixture of the two of them. I'm using the Sheas module to alternate between basically eighths and sixteenths, or quarters and eighths, however you want to call it. A somewhat random pattern of rhythms that are at a steady pulse set by the clock here. If I turn it faster, right, that's almost a drum. But what happens if we run it through the resonant filter? I've got the pedal set like this so that when I turn it on, what should happen is it's just at the edge, right? Let's unclip those for a second. Here's what's happening on the pedal. Nothing. But both of the resonance controls are almost self-oscillating. If I turn either knob up a little bit, resonating. How about this one? right on the edge. Now, I'm going to send it some pings again. And listen to what happens when it receives just that little push over the edge. A little bit of input signal. Bongos! Of course, it's really fun to send it a little bit of modulation, so it's changing where that knob is set. Now, the Pulsar has built into it an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. I'm going to take this blue cable, patch it from the LFO, and clip it over here to one of these ports. It'll now send tiny 8th inch jack connections. I'll take this 8th to 8th TS cable, take it out of there, and plug it into the CV input. Maybe 
maybe that's sending too large of a range. Maybe I want to attenuate that. We're going to use an attenuator. Clip that. And clip that. So I'm sending a smaller range. Now it's turning up and down that knob. What if we modulate the high pass frequency instead? And once again, I could use the same source to modulate both cutoff points if I use something like this. This is a molt cable. And now, the LFO will modulate both. Alien bongos. <laughs> Replace your synth's filter with an MS-20 filter. Let's say you have a synth. That synth makes a noise and you want to filter it. Maybe it even has a filter built in and you'd like something that has a different character. You can substitute so high, so low. Here's the sound of the bass module on the Pulsar 23. Now, it has a few different options for timbre. It's got a shape and warp control. As I mess with those, you'll hear there's quite a bit of flavor in here already. One of the reasons I like this a lot. lot of options on that bass module but there's only one filter it has a low pass filter and that low pass has a certain sound to it I'm gonna sweep that and you'll hear what this filter sounds like say you want to mix things up. You want a different flavor. You want to make your bass sound a little different. Let's, instead of using the built-in filter, let's use so high, so low instead. Check it out. The difference already is pretty clear, right? This is the filter all the way open. Filter all the way open. Without doing anything else, this is adding some overtones and some sizzle on top. Same settings for shape and warp, filter not doing anything yet, resonance all the way down, this filter's all the way open, but something about the preamp saturation gives a little extra sauce. It's buzzier. As I turn up the resonance,
Ooh, listen to that growl. That's filthy. Compared to? Nice, but rounder, right? If it's buzzier from this resonance, it's not the same buzz. Right? Resonance at min, max. So the buzz is not coming from the resonance. Whereas here, I'm relying on this resonance to give it that high-end content. And it seems like no matter what I do, it doesn't have the same treble, the same bite, the same grit as this does. You can hear some of that's coming from the preamp saturation unit, which again is Moog inspired. Now let's add the high pass, a control that this doesn't have. All of a sudden we're getting that MS-20 growl. This is the thing that really sells it for me, is that series stacking of resonance and resonance. It's almost got like a formant thing going What? You get the idea. That's a completely different sounding bass synth now, and all I did was swap out the filter. Pretty cool. <sighs> Last but not least, we're gonna do some feedback patching. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Feedback is always asking for chaos. But here's the idea. I've got audio coming out of the pulsar, going into the so high, so low, and back from the so high, so low into the pulsar, which then gets fed back again. In other words, this attenuator knob is the only thing between us and absolute chaos. Of course, the settings on the pedal will determine what that feedback sounds like. Let's turn the master volume up to medium, put the saturation pretty low, let's have the filters all the way open with medium resonance, just to see as a starting point. I have no idea what's gonna happen. So far, nothing. Okay, let's bring up the resonance. Now it's exciting itself.
chicken noises. And of course, if we add some other sauce and modulation into the feedback path, we'll get some more craziness. What if we run it through a delay and use the LFO to modulate the filter cutoffs a little bit? Let's patch that. This is the kind of filth that I live for. I love this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I got lost in this pedal again. As I was filming this, I accidentally did an hour of jamming on the Pulsar. And just the Pulsar and this alone is infinite fun. I am so smitten with that drum machine and all the chaotic wonderfulness that it can do. Um, this just adds just the right bit of extra sauce. So that's the so high, so low, and a bunch of different things you can do with it. I hope you found this inspiring. If you have an MS-20 or another filter lying around, some of these techniques could be used with your other things, but I gotta say, 
this was worth every penny. You can get one at analogmusic.company. The link for their website is in the description of this video. It comes in a bunch of different colors. I got mine in white because it matches my Pulsar, but check out the website to see some other colorways as well. What do you think? Do you like it? Would you buy one? Do you have other filter pedals that you like or filters that you prefer? Tell me your favorite filter in the comments. Let me know if you've got some other things that you think I could do with this that I haven't tried yet, things you'd like to see. And if you'd like to hear that long extended jam on the electronic stuff, I will be uploading that to my Patreon page as a fan jam. So please join me there if you'd like to hear more. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Constantine for making some awesome stuff. Um, small side note at the end of this, Analog Music Company is based in the Ukraine and as of 2023, as I'm filming this, there's still a lot of tumult and chaos happening in that part of the world right now. So, you know, do what you can to support. This is one small, tiny way to support a small independent builder in the Ukraine. Um, that's not what this video is about. This video is about an awesome pedal, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, you know, the world exists. So <laughs> this is a great way for me to get lost and it's a good way for you to get involved. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to get more videos and updates. Uh, thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You make all of this possible and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.